Well, the fans, the riders, the people are starting to roll in here on a Friday afternoon for the Rockstar Energy Drake National Unadilla and the Racetrex Motocross Show has got all the scoops that everyone has come here to see. James Stewart back in action for the first time since 2008. We've got Clement DeSalle, who is second in points in the GP Series racing, and even Jason Lawrence returning to the sport. All coming up next on your Racetrex Motocross Show. Well, here we go, folks. Welcome to the Race Rex Motocross Show. We are at the Rockstar Energy Drink National at Unadilla Valley Sports Center, New Berlin, New York. Jason Wagan, your host. And this is the one people have been talking about for the last couple of weeks. The number seven is here. The team Sam Elwell Rig has driven all the way from California to upstate New York to put James Stewart in competition. We haven't seen him in this series since 2008. But when he was here, he won every single moto. So certainly the guy should be strong. So what will happen when we take the irresistible force of Stewart and the immovable object of Ryan Dungey put them together in the same track? We'll find out tomorrow. In the meantime, we have some other guest stars besides Stewart racing here this weekend. Suzuki's bringing in the man who's number two in the GP series, Clement DeSalle, and we had a chance to catch up with him. All right, we got a bonus here at Unadilla. Clement DeSalle, second in the GP series in the MX1 class right now. It's here racing. We saw you at Washougal last year. Now you got the factory Suzuki. What do you expect to do this weekend? Where do you hope to end up? Yeah, I expect to, to do my best like I did last year, but uh, the conditions are better now and uh, yeah, hopefully it will be better. Yeah, big improvement this year in the GP. So what's happened this year for you to step up your game and, and win a whole bunch of motos and, and be second in the series? Yeah, it's, it's good. You know, I make a step again, but uh, I'm still second and not first. So <laughs> I'm working to, to be first, but... Uh, yeah, you know, the sport is difficult, but I do my best and want to, to work on, on the way to be to be the best. How excited are you to race this weekend? The team says you've been here checking out the bike, checking out the bike, looking at the track. You came early. You're excited about this race this weekend. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, the track is really, really good. looks really nice, and uh, hopefully I will have uh, good fun. That's sure that I will have a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully no crash and a uh, good result. And... Yeah, like that. Good luck. Thanks. I would like to say a big thanks to the team Rockstar, Mike Tasuki here, and also Roger De Costa, and also my team, Rockstar Takasuki, who make the combination that, I, that I'm here. It looks good. Well, hey, he got third in a moto last year at Washougal. Who knows? He could be even further up front this weekend at Unadilla. All right, we're going to get in-depth with this Unadilla track. Now, it has been around as long as any motocross track in the U.S., 41 years. Remember, we had Retro Weekend here last year, but they made a lot of track changes the last few years. One thing that hasn't changed, of course, is the start. Backward falling gate. We've had those since the 70s. But everything else basically beyond this is new. Just a couple of years ago, they changed this whole start straightaway. There used to be a nice dip built in. Now it's completely even across, so every single gate should have a reasonably good opportunity to grab a whole shot in the first turn right-hander. And that's just the beginning. A lot of other changes. Let's go show you. Okay, this is the big elevator jump. You might remember a 100-foot tabletop that the guys go over and throw it sideways. Last year, they slowed the track down a little bit by having the riders make a left at the bottom of that jump. So that section is still here this year, but as you can see, they're making some refinements to this section as we speak. Going to put some new jumps in there and things like that, just to try to make sure the inside and outside lines are equal on this part of the racetrack. Now, the most distinctive obstacle here at Unadilla is gravity cavity, but they've thrown a twist in this year. For the first time, they've built a giant lip before they get into the cavity, we'll be hanging some banners in front of what is concrete right now, and that'll launch the riders back down into the cavity. So more air coming in, and of course the same amount of air coming out. Just a little bit of a new school twist on one of the oldest and most famous obstacles in this sport. And again, we only ride practice for the first time on Saturday morning race day, so we don't know exactly how this is going to shape up until tomorrow. Now, not all the changes for Unadilla this year are aimed at the riders. There's some cool sections for the spectators to watch the action from as well, including infield viewing for the first time ever in 41 years of racing. This roller section opens the door to a new tunnel, which will feed spectators onto the infield of the track. And then there's another tunnel right on the other side that allows them to get from one side of the track to the other. So they can stop at the infield, watch some of the moto, and then go all the way to the other side of the track if they desire. So a whole new way to view racing here at Unadilla. 
made a lot of changes to this track, and the first one that you'll see is right over my head. We now have a pedestrian bridge over your head. The riders come out of the traditional start, they make a right-hand turn, and then this used to be a series of S-turns on the infield, but now they make one turn and go straight down here into a brand new tabletop jump. You can see the lip behind me. Now, the pedestrian bridge will not be used for pedestrians this year, but they plan on integrating it into a whole new system of tunnel waves to allow fans to come and watch the track from the inside. So it looks cool from the top and the bottom. All right, here's one more look at Gravity Cavity. This is the rider's perspective. It's pretty gnarly to jump that far down. And as you can see, we have to be very safe at the races, especially on practice day when sections have been redesigned. Yeah, caution, steep drop ahead. All right, my lap time's a little slow on foot, so let's give you a little bit faster view of this track, courtesy of our GoPro helmet cam mounted on the Rockstar Suzuki of Hunter Hewitt. Okay, they're having a fan fest here at Unadilla on Friday night. Some of the riders are here signing some autographs, so if you were here early, you might just luck out. So we decided to grab some of those fans and have them perform as co-host this weekend and get their thoughts on racing at Unadilla. All right, when I interview fans, I like to keep a fence between myself and them so they understand my VIP status. This is Pat. Where are you from, man? I am from... Oh, hold on. There's a fence between us. Where are you from? I'm from Charlton, New York, about two hours down the road from here. And you're doing some actual amateur racing first? Doing some actual amateur racing, yes, that's true. Now, tomorrow you're a fan. Who are you pulling for, man? Who's going to be looking good at Unadilla? I, I think Wyndham's going to do it. You know, he's had the two-week break, you know? Yeah. He's got the physical coming back up. He's going to do it. He's, right. I'm calling him. Now, we got James Stewart back in competition. What do you think? Everybody's buzzing about Stewart versus Dungey, one against the other. What do you think might happen there? Any idea? You know, Stewart's been off the bike for a while. I don't want to call that or anything, but you know what? I think Dungey might have a little something on. I'm rooting for Wyndham, but, you know, Dungey's got it. Dungey's got it. Nice. Good opinions here. So let's go to the 250 class. Trey Kennard's won a bunch of races now. He's got the momentum. Definitely. Christophe Porcel, can he stop that, or is he just resting on his points lead? What do you think's up with this guy? You know, Kennard's been short since the Supercross season when he won the championship, but you know what I'm saying? I think I think Kennard's got the ball rolling. I think he's got it going, you know? Usually Christophe's the, the first moto man, but we'll see what happens this time. You know what I'm saying? I think Kennard's got it. I think Kennard's got it. Good stuff from Pat. It's too bad you're up. Well, maybe next year we can get you on the other end of the fence. You're there pretty knowledgeable. That's, that's what we're talking about. You know? Cool. You want to talk about history being made at Unadilla. We are actually with a couple, Eric and Debbie, who got married at this track on Gravity Cavity in 1999. What the heck led to that, Eric? Well, I've been coming here since 1968 and haven't missed a year yet. And Unadilla means a lot to me. Right. Well, it means a lot now. You guys have been married for 11 years. And now you have Hannah. Where did you come up? Where does the name Hannah? Why is she named Hannah, Debbie? Bob Hannah. Of course. And the also legend. the legend of Unadilla. So this family got married and a happy family 11 years later, right? Yep. Right yep. On. Been taking you here since 1978. Wow. And it took them that long to propose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the family's happy. Some more history right here at Unadilla. All right, pretty cool thing that we just found out about actually here at Unadilla. You see all these green trees behind us? Well, you'd be surprised how environmentally aware motocrossers are. We got Privateer with us, Jacob Morrison, and he is actually backed by Reforest the Tropics. And the plan is to do what, Scott Keller? Well, we've calculated the carbon emissions of his motorcycle, and we've planted a forest that will absorb the same amount of carbon dioxide as he emits. So you actually have a forest now named after you in South America? Yeah, I do. You can go on uh, reforestatropics.org, and now uh, you can see my name on there, planting trees. Wow. So you can actually do more help for the environment by planting trees 
to offset whatever you do with your car, your truck, your motorcycle, all that stuff. Yeah, well, it gives the end user the ability to do something a little proactive in the environment, and that's important. Uh, the bikes emit greenhouse gases, and the trees absorb that, and it's like it never happened. Well, yes. I mean, the reality is, is that we're going to use fossil fuels to do what we do, and I think we should try to connect it with a simple idea of planting trees. All right. Reforestthetropics.org, supporting the privateer, Jacob Morrison. All right, we're going to wrap this show up, but first a riddle. What do Clement de Salle, James Stewart, and Jason Lawrence have in common? Well, up until tomorrow, absolutely, positively nothing, but all three of them will be racing at Unadilla tomorrow, so that will be the answer if all three of them make it to the gate drops. We sure hope so. The 338 is here. He's got a new outside sponsor. His return to the sport came at X Games. He finished the race there. He's hoping to finish both motos here. We'll see how the 338 does back in action. And you can check this all out. We'll be live. Of course, our first motos will actually start at 1240 Eastern time tomorrow on AlliedSports.com. And then we'll have live 450 second moto coverage on NBC. Check your local listings. And our 250 show will air Sunday afternoon on Speed. So that's all the coverage from the Rockstar Energy Drink National at Unadilla. It's going to be an awesome weekend for the sport, so make sure you're a part of it.